Okay, WWE stopping grounds and a quick overall thoughts on the show. Uh, surprisingly good, given the almost total lack of buildup and almost as equal lack of enthusiasm for some of these matches. Most of them turned out pretty darn good. Uh, and rather surprisingly, uh, there's a lot of great, great work rate matches in this. Uh, good job telling stories and all of it. Uh, for the most part, everything worked. I'll get to the problems when I get to them. Uh, so let's start off with our kickoff show match, which is uh, naturally the WWE Cruiserweight Triple Threat match. Tony Nese putting the championship on the line against Akira Tozawa and Drew Gulak. Uh, early on, there was a, a really uh, great spot where there was a double German suplex, a double bridging German suplex. I think it was uh, Nice was suplexing uh, Gulak, who was suplexing Tozawa into the bridging, and they almost had a double pin scenario. Uh, nice hit his cartwheel and a super kick on. Uh, Gulak on the outside of the ring, Tozawa hit a missile drop kick, um, and then uh, Gulak, let's see, what he, uh, he suplexed Nice onto Tozawa uh, off of the ropes, basically. Uh, Tozawa was draped through the ropes, that's what happened. Uh, Tozawa broke up a dragon, uh, Gulak blocked Nice in a dragon sleeper, but Tozawa broke it up. Uh, basically, uh, the end scene um, was that Nice hit his uh, running Nice finisher, uh, he, had a vit, uh, he had a vertebraker, but Tozawa broke that pin up with the Shining Wizard. Uh, nice went for the running Nice again, but Gulak countered that. Uh, and then uh, Tozawa hit a one-legged drop kick on Nice, knocking him off the ring apron and into the barricade. But that enabled Gulak to hit his torture rack neckbreaker finisher for the three count of the win. And Drew Gulak is finally the WWE Cruiserweight Champion after a, it's been a long time coming because... He's been one of the few characters who actually have a character on 205 Live. Uh, like I said, this is something that should have happened last year. He had a lot of momentum. He was uh, His whole shtick of being the cruiserweight who doesn't do the aerial moves. And there weren't a lot of aerial moves in this match. I mean, there were a couple ones, like uh, uh, Tozawa had a couple sentons. Uh, and he went for a 450 splash at one point. But other than that, there wasn't a lot of those types of maneuvers. It was actually very ground-based, I think. Again, because that's been Gulak's angle the whole time, I think, again, this could actually work into really get helping uh, that brand. And should, like I said, it should have happened a lot sooner. Um, I'd say maybe the one drawback is, again, Nisa's reign wasn't all too long. I mean, he won it at WrestleMania, and everyone says, well, no one cared about his matches. But unfortunately, you know, 205 Live is just in this weird nether realm where the matches are on the reign roster, but... I mean, they almost feel like they should really be part of NXT. It's just, that's just kind of how it is. Anyway, moving on to the show proper, we started off with the Raw Women's Championship match, Becky Lynch versus Lacey Evans, and yes, this actually does have consequences later on. Uh, a lot of team, uh, kind of chain wrestling from Becky early on. Uh, she did some tip waist lock takedowns. Uh, she landed a back elbow and then hit a spin kick off of that. Uh, at one point, uh, Lacey Evans managed to uh, push Becky into the outer edge of the ring table. Uh, Becky began selling a, ring, uh, a rib injury from that. Uh, Lacey did a uh, bow and arrow hold, uh, pulling Becky's hair uh, around the ring post, basically, uh, focusing on the ribs. Becky was selling the rib injury for the rest of the match. Uh, Bre Becky bridged out of the pin and then used the top rope to lock on the disarmor. Well, they said it was a disarmor. Really, it was a cross-arm breaker, but uh, okay. Anyway, uh, Becky hit a flying forearm and then followed it with the Peck Exploder. Uh, Lacey came back and uh, kind of did either the acid drop or the slice bread number two that was Brian Kendrick's finisher, uh, except she modified it into a stunner rather than a cutter. But only got a two count, and then uh, Lacey was uh, quite upset that she... So she went up to try to do a moonsault. Becky managed to get up, pulled Lacey off of the ring, off the ropes, and locked on the disarmor, and Lacey tapped immediately. Uh, like I said before, uh, this was a really well done match, uh, given Lace, some of Lacey Evans' shortcomings. Uh, I think this worked way better than a match at Money in the Bank. It was well plotted. Uh, they were given time to actually do things. Uh, they did a good job telling the story. Uh, Becky saw in the rib injury, so this one worked pretty well, too. And that leads us into our third match, the tag team match between Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and Xavier and Big E of The New Day. Uh, right off the bat, uh, Owens and Zayn just dominated this match. They uh, immediately, right off the bat, uh, right uh, right after the ring bell, Owens super kicked Big E off the ring apron, 
and then super kicked uh, Xavier Woods and hit a senton. And then Zane came in and hit the Blue Thunder Bomb on Xavier Woods and almost hit a frog splash. And just they kept pounding on A. And they would use the ref to. to they would use Big E, but they would antagonize Big E so he would enter the ring and that would distract the ref so they could beat up more on Xavier. A lot of really great power moves. Eventually, Big E did get the hot tag and hit a series of German, uh, belly belly suplexes on Zayn. Uh, New Day hit an electric chair splash on Sami Zayn. Uh, they then tried to hit the up, up, down, down on Kevin Owens, but Zayn broke that up. Uh, Zayn and Owens hit a Haluva, su a Haluva kick power, uh, pop-up power bomb combo on, I believe it was Xavier Woods. Um, and then uh, there was kind of the schmoz broke out, and they kind of forgot it was legal, uh, so they tried to go after Big E briefly. Uh, Big E hit a spear through the ropes on Zayn, but as that was happening, uh, Owens blocked a top rope elbow drop from Xavier and hit... Uh, the stunner for the three count and the victory. Uh, so, yeah, again, really good high-impact match. I think this helps elevate Owens and Zayn a little bit. Uh, definitely grooming probably Owens, possibly both Owens and Zayn, to be Kofi's next opponents. Uh, yeah, spoiler for early on, sorry. Um, but, yeah, that was, like I said, a really well done uh, power match that helps elevate the bad guys up a little bit. That And, yeah, they... Uh, the SmackDown side definitely needs some elevated heels. After that, we have the United States Championship match, Samoa Joe versus Ricochet. Uh, and a funny thing happened during the intro is uh, Ricochet was doing his little uh, backflip off the ropes into the ring, and he uh, slipped and fell flat on his face. Um, but uh, early, early on, Joe was definitely playing the power game. He uh, tried to go for a test of strength and actually used that uh, sucker punch uh, Ricochet right off the bat. Uh, Ricochet tried to do his speed moves, but Joe just kept grabbing him and tossing him around. Tossed Ricochet into the ring apron, uh, hit an Uranagi, uh, used the ropes to hit a sit-down powerbomb. Uh, Ricochet came back and hit two Instaguris. Uh, Ricochet hit a suicide plancha and then followed that with a missile drop kick. Uh, Joe countered a backspring elbow into a German suplex. Uh, he went for the, uh, the coquina clutch, but uh, Ricochet managed to get over the ropes and then uh, basically did a hangman maneuver over the top ropes, which incapacitated Joe. Uh, Ricochet went for the 360. Joe dodged that. Uh, Ricochet managed to come back, hit the code breaker, and then hit a 630, I mean, not 360, <laughs> a 630 for uh, the three count and the victory. Uh, the new United States champion is Ricochet. Um, again, uh, given what happened last month with uh, the Phantom Pin and the injuries and everything that happened with uh, the Joe Ray Mysterio match. This was definitely a pickup. I don't know so much about uh, taking the belt off of Joe again so quickly, but again, we need to help kind of elevate these lower tier belts a little bit. And again, putting it on good work rate guys is a good way to do that. And this was another, like I said, great work rate match. Uh, did a good job telling the story. I mean, there were times where like, Ricochet was looked completely out of it. I mean, there was one point Ricochet went for a kick. Joe blocked it and. He flipped Ricochet over, and normally where Ricochet would land on his feet, Ricochet actually flipped over twice and landed right on his back. It was a, an amazing maneuver. Uh, so, yeah, like that was the kind of stuff that happened in this show. Okay, our next match is the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match, the Planet's Champions, Daniel Bryan and Rowan, versus Heavy Machinery. Uh, the Tacoma crowd was decidedly in Daniel Bryan's favor the whole match, even though he's supposed to be the heel. Uh, I would say this, uh, going into this match, uh, a lot of Daniel Bryan's complaints against uh, Heavy Machinery is that they're too gimmicky, they, you know, they try too much to be funny, and they do the caterpillar and the hip thrusts, uh, and uh, during the kickoff show, they did a backstage promo with Daniel Bryan, and uh, Charles Robinson, I think, in a, he either intentionally or inadvertently walked into the shot, and Daniel and Bryan just turned around and ripped him a new one. He's like, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be in here. Get out of here, Charles. <laughs> yeah, so he's making these complaints. And again, uh, here's the thing during the match. Uh, heavy Machinery definitely dialed down the shtick. I mean, they did the, you know, the Bushwhacker walk, and uh, they did do a couple of th short things. But other than that, uh, right off the bat, I mean, Otis was in the ring. Uh, he didn't sell Brian's kicks, which, quick kicks, which immediately got booed. He shot Brian in the corner, which also got booed. Uh, Rowan tagged into the match and dropped Tucker with a crossbody. Uh, 
Rowan and Brian uh, took to the uh, isolating Tucker Knight as best they could. Uh, they had a running knee corner splash combo. Uh, Tucker dodged a uh, Rowan. Uh, uh, well, Rowan was charging into the corner and hit the ring post. Basically, that's what happened. Um, Otis got the hot tag. He immediately slammed Brian. Otis went for a Vader bomb, but Brian dodged it. Otis hit the caterpillar and then catapulted uh, Brian into a power slam from Tucker Knight. Uh, Tucker hit a moon, uh, tried, was supposed to, here's what happened, Tucker went up for the moonsault, he was in the flip, and Brian was trying to roll away, unfortunately he didn't quite roll away fast enough, he got caught, uh, really hard, and you could tell, like, something bad, oh, it, he was lucky it didn't hit him in the head, I just, uh, that would have been, a, it was almost a disaster, uh, but basically, uh, Tucker Knight's feet caught him as he was flipping, and, uh, as this was happening, uh, Heavy Machine went for the compactor on Rowan, uh, even though Brian was actually the legal man, and he broke it up. Uh, Tucker Knight hit a big crossbody to the outside, got back into the ring, tried to pin Brian, who suckered him into a small package for the three count of the victory. And again, uh, really good work rate match, did a good job of telling the story in this. The story of heavy machinery kind of proving that when focused, they actually can be this really dominant tag team. And that, you know, Rowan and Brian do probably have to, uh, Brian and Rowan again, uh, do kind of have to respect them a little bit more than they do. So, yeah, yeah, it does seem like maybe they're, they might be building to something. Hopefully they're building to something, at least. Um, after that, we have the SmackDown Women's Championship match. Bailey versus Alexa Bliss, uh, who had Nikki, Bro uh, Nikki Cross, I said, sorry, in her corner. And uh, right off the bat, Bailey hit a jumping knee to Alexa while she was in the corner. Bailey's, uh, Alexa came back, slammed Bailey's head off the turnbuckle. Alexa fought out of a slam attempt and... Hit a back, a hair pulling backbreaker. Uh, Alexa did a scene where uh, Bailey was in the corner. Uh, Alexa went for kind of like a corner splash, but then stopped and <laughs> smacked Bailey about that hard uh, with her hand instead. Uh, Bailey fought out of a head scissors and hit a suplex. Uh, they got to the outside of the ring. Uh, at this point, too, um, something funny has been going on because they've kind of been building towards a possible Bailey heel turn. I think it's kind of it's and maybe even a little bit an Alexa Bliss face turn, uh, and you'd think they would try to play into that more going into this. Uh, they did point out things like you know Alexa Bliss said, "Hey, you know I reached out when I was in NXT and I was floundering. I reached out to Bailey and you shot me down, and you know Bailey had, doesn't really deny that." So yeah, again, like Bailey's been doing these kind of say these things like. I'm, I'm not just the hugger anymore, I'm not just the, you know, the big kid anymore, uh, I'm, I'm focused, I'm driven, I want to be the best. And Alexa um, has again had these things where, you know, oh, her, she's had to wrestle without her shoes, she's had to do this and this. Uh, she got goaded into a match even though she didn't have her gear on, so stuff like that has been going on as well. And you would think that they would bring... Uh, one of the things that could bring up to me help turn Alexa face is uh, bring up her recent concussion history. She, yeah, you know, she got walked a couple of times last year. Yeah, she got a pretty nasty concussion that took her up for a few months. Uh, she came back and about, got about another one and had to miss WrestleMania because of that. And so when you have a spot where Bailey uh, does a sunset flip power bomb and sends uh, Alexa head first into the turnbuckle, you. Would, I think the announcers would kind of play into that more to help set up these these turns, but they didn't, and that's kind of uh, one real drawback with this. Um, as this was happening, uh, they got to the outside of the ring. Uh, Bailey was going for a suicide dive, and uh, it looked like initially that Nikki had pushed Alexa out of the way so that she could take the the brunt of the dive, but really it was more like Alexa pulled Nikki into the path of the dive. Uh, Nikki sent, or Alexa sent uh, Bailey into the ring steps, uh, got Bailey into the ring to try to hit the Twisted Bliss, and then Becky, or not Becky, sorry, Nikki <laughs> uh, distracted the ref and broke up the attempt. That enabled Bailey to uh, get her knees up and then hit the Bailey to Belly for the three count of the victory. So uh, after uh, the last time Bailey was a champion, I faced Alexa Bliss and the couldn't follow through with a kendo stick maneuver, so Bailey finally seems to have gotten some amount of revenge. Uh, like I said, overall, really decent match with some weird uh, storytelling bits that probably helped uh, drag that down just a little bit in my book. 
Okay, our next match is Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre, who had Shane McMahon in his corner. Um, right off the bat, as Reigns was making his entrance, uh, McIntyre got out of the ring and jumped Reigns on the ramp. The two brawled. Reigns hit a suicide dive over the top rope onto McIntyre and Shane. Uh, Reigns chased Shane through the crowd, but that enabled McIntyre to come back and jump on him a little bit again. Uh, the crowd was way too harsh on this match. I thought those were really darn... Again, another good, work rate storytelling match. And the, about five minutes in, the crowd is just crapping all over it, saying this is awful. And it's like, this isn't awful. It's been really good. I mean, okay, so, you know, there weren't a lot of high-impact, high-spot moves, but still, it was, you know, some matches start off, it go it hits slow periods, and this one did. Uh, I mean, with McIntyre kind of dominating thing, Reigns began to come back. At one point, uh, McIntyre kind of locked on this uh, sitting surfboard hold. Um, and Shane was doing a good job trying to get the ref to call Reigns out and say, Hey, hey, he's tapping. He's saying he gives. Oh, hey, he passed up. My phone goes off, of course. Um, and all of that happened. Uh, they began to... Uh, Shane interfered at another point, uh, tried to interfere, and Reigns rallied and hit... Uh, was going for a Superman punch on McIntyre. Had to alter it to hit uh, Shane McMahon instead, and that enabled McIntyre to hit uh, the inverted Alabama slam on the announce table. Uh, Reigns managed to rally back again, uh, got his uh, pull of the spear, but Shane interfered again and pulled the ref out of the ring. Uh, Shane hit the Van Terminator on uh, on Reigns, but McIntyre only got a two count on it, and then. Uh, Reigns rallied back again, hit a Superman punch, sent Shane out of the ring. Uh, he then hit a spear, and the ref counted three for the victory. Again, um, a good a good job with this match. Uh, tell, again, telling the story, letting, again, Reigns look like Reigns might lose, might come back and get a victory, you know, or Shane was going to cost Roman again, the way uh, McIntyre cost uh, Roman against Shane again in uh, the Super Showdown. But again, it's, again, it worked really well. I think it told the good match. Uh, the unfortunate thing is the crowd was just, it kind of, you know, held this back because they just, again, I, I don't know if it's because they, they want to hate Roman Reigns again or what. Again, and the only other drawback I would say is I keep hearing how much they love uh, Drew McIntyre and how much they want to push Drew McIntyre, but when he loses all the time, it's hard to make it look like he's a convincing threat for anything. So, but other than that, it, it was pretty good. And that leads us into the WWE Championship Steel Cage match, Kofi Kingston versus Dolph Ziggler. Uh, this match, I think, maybe deserved a little bit more than this is awful chant. Uh, it could have been better. It was a little too slow in plotting in some aspects. Uh, Ziggler hit a big drop kick and then tried to leave the cage. Uh, Ziggler dodged a corner splash and tossed Kofi into the cage. Uh, Kofi had a springboard drop kick. Uh, Kofi caught, countered a famous attempt and threw Dolph into the cage. Uh, Kofi had a springboard caught, uh, was trying to climb the cage and realized he could not get any footing, and so he used it to uh, do a springboard crossbody onto Ziggler. Uh, at this point, uh, Dolph countered a trouble in paradise into a late DDT. Uh, Kofi was selling a knee injury, so uh, Ziggler locked on a knee bar. He locked on kind of a figure four hold. He did an ankle lock. And it was trying to, like, Kofi was trying to fight out of it. He got to the ropes. They did not call a rope break, unlike the last time they did a cage match. <laughs> that was the plus side of the show. There were no ref botches that would really ruin anything. Uh, Kofi went for another counter, uh, Trouble in Paradise. Uh, Ziggler countered that into an ankle lock. Uh, Kofi fought out of the ankle lock, but got hit with a zigzag, only for a two count, though. And they started heading towards the door, and Ziggler almost got out, but Kofi just caught him. They were fighting a bit, they were fighting a bit, and, like, as Ziggler was trying to still crawl out of the cage, Kofi was still trying to grab Ziggler's legs. Finally, Ziggler came back, uh, got Kofi with a thumb to the eye, started to head out the cage, but then with a last-ditch effort, Kofi basically blind, uh, took a blind run and dove over Ziggler out of the cage to hit the floor first and win. Um... Like I said, uh, this match was probably the most disappointing of the night. It could have been better. Uh, they didn't really do it. Like, this was the one that was really lacking high spots. This is what this crowd should have been chanting for against. Not the Reigns-McIntyre match. Um, but, yeah, this was kind of disappointing. 
and then after that, uh, I mean, especially you know that they're saying that Shane McMahon is going to be Kofi's next challenger, and he might actually win the championship. I really hope they don't do that. Do Owens? Do Zayn? Do something like that? Don't don't do Shane McMahon, please. Uh, like I said, yeah, this was probably the the worst match of the night, unfortunately. Okay, and that takes us to our main event, the WWE Universal Championship match. Seth Rollins versus Baron Corbin with Baron Corbin's specially selected guest referee. Now, earlier in the night, Corbin said he had made his selection, but he wasn't going to tell anyone. They were going to find out when the match was going to take place. Uh, at another point, uh, Paul Heyman was seen coming out of Corbin's dressing room, and they asked, is, Cor is Heyman the best guest referee? Is Brock Lesnar here? Is something going on? And Heyman just said, no, no, there's nothing to see here. I was just... You know, reminding Mr. Corbin that should he win, you know, Brock could be coming after him with the briefcase. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so the match ro rolls around, and Corbin gets on the mic, and first Rollins threatens him with the chair, but finally Corbin yeah, picks up the microphone and he says, Look, you take out everyone with that chair. You think you're going to stop everyone, but, you know, I picked the one person I know you can't, t you will not take down with a chair. The sassy Southern Belle, Lacey Evans. <laughs> so, I, I gotta admit, it was one I wasn't expecting. I thought it was a pretty novel choice. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, 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 like I said, I kind of thought, yeah, that actually is genius. Because again, that's not you're not going to have you, the guy you're building the cup, you're the focal point of your company, you know, attacking a woman with a chair, no matter uh, whether or not he's tech, she's technically the enemy, or well, you get the idea. Anyway, um, right off the bat, set because Seth can't attack with the chair, Corbin attacks Rollins with the chair. Uh, the bell had not rung at this point. They fought on the outside. Eventually the bell rings, but Lacey doesn't want to administer a 10 count. When she does, it's very slow. And so she, about halfway through, decides, no, no, no count outs. And then later, when Corbin attacks Rollins with the chair again, she says no, dis no disqualification. Uh, Corbin hits a DDT. Uh, Lacey tries to go for a fast count. Uh, sucker punches Rollins in the throat. Rollins comes back with a sing blade. He covers Corbin, but again, slow count. Rollins hits Sunset Flip Power Bomb off of the apron and sends Corbin through the announce table. Uh, this is where the count out spot happened, where she makes it a no count out match. Uh, Corbin came back at two so choke slams. Uh, Rollins came back at a frog, uh, frog, sorry, a frog splash. Uh, Lacey started selling a shoulder injury during her count. Uh, again, they make the match no DQ. Rollins hits a falcon on the chair. Uh, Evans refuses to count as Rollins gets up and starts arguing. She low blows Rollins. And just when Corbin hits the end of days, that's when Becky Lynch hits the ring and attacks Lacey Evans and tosses her into the ring. Uh, tosses her into the, uh, it's a backsploder into the ring barricade, basically. Uh, the other refs come down to rein Becky in. Corbin, not paying attention to this point, says, hey, I need a new ref in here right now. And it turns out it's, uh, I think it's John Cohen, uh, who was the ref in the Super Showdown, who you know, stopped Corbin from using the chair to get the victory. So he comes in and says, it's no DQ, remember? And it's like, yeah, I know. And he goes for, uh, uh, Corbin goes for the end of days, Rollins fights out, hits a super kick, hits a curb stomp for the three count of the victory, and afterwards... Uh, Corbin and Becky embrace, uh, sort of play with each other a little bit. They don't kiss or anything, but uh, Becky actually holds the ropes open for Seth to leave. Um, and then they sat on the ring apron and kind of had a few laughs and then went up to the top of the ramp, and that was it. Uh, yes, they are a couple in real life. Uh, it was revealed during, I think it was the WrestleMania 24-7 or something, or 24 or whatever. Uh, they showed some of the back, uh, backstage stuff. Uh, there have been some rumors. But yeah, they're now playing that into the storylines. Uh, no, no Lesnar showed up. Uh, and at least the show was short, too. So <laughs> that had that going for it. Um, uh, the crowd, again, was overly harsh on this match. They didn't really need to be. Um, most special guest referee matches tend to be train wrecks. And I thought this was entertaining. I liked the way... I, Lacey Evans did a really good job of playing the heel referee in this. Uh, selling the injury at the right time. You know, you know, nonchalantly making 10 counts during the count-out part. And, again, everything worked really well. Changing the rules in the fly. That's what happens in these matches. 
I think they did a good job of that. And yeah, again, the crowd was a little overly harsh doing the CM Punk chants, really. We're still doing those, you know, f almost five years later. Uh, anyway, uh, overall, I am going to give uh, Stomping Rounds a, probably a B. Uh, I don't know if I could quite go all the way into A territory, I, like I said. I would say the SmackDown Women's Championship match is a little bit of a downer, and uh, like I said, they could have done more with that, and they could have done more with uh, Kofi and Ziggler. But other than that, uh, all the matches on the show were really well done, really well executed, especially given, uh, like I said, the lack of preparation and the lack of enthusiasm for some of these matches. I think they did pretty darn well uh, considering all of that. So that seemed to be uh, going through there. All right, so next wrestling shows. Uh, I am trying to do uh, Fighter Fest. Um, I'm house sitting the, this weekend as well, so I don't know if I'll be doing it here or if I'll be doing it up there. I did get uh, Bleacher Report Live installed on both my smart TV and my uh, Kindle Fire Stick, so hopefully I can get that ready to go and uh, working so I can uh, watch Fighter Fest. Um, after that, it's going to be. Uh, uh, the next video after that is going to be um, uh, the random trade review on Olympian Zeus. Uh, that that random trade review might actually come before Fighter Fest. I don't know yet, depending on how all this shakes out. Uh, the next review after uh, okay, next movie review is Annabelle Comes Home. Uh, then probably the random trade review on Olympian Zeus. Then uh, Fighter Fest. Uh, next wrestling show after that is Extreme Rules which is on July 14th. Um, see you all next time. constantly talking only about WWE and NXT, want to see me expand my wrestling coverage? Check out my Patreon at Sleepy Time for Cat Productions. Also, remember, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and ring that notification bell.